This is a 3D plant I easily create myself and today I'm exactly going to show you how I did it. Step 1. Take photos. So the first step is to go outside, pick a plant you want to take photos of and then put a white sheet of paper behind the leaf. Take photo with your camera or phone. If you have a CPL filter, you can use it too to avoid reflections, especially when shooting with flash. Also shoot in RAW if possible. Don't worry if you don't have a CPL filter, just make sure you shoot during blue hour or avoid direct sunlight. Also try to avoid shadows from other leaves on the leaf you are photographing. Step 2. Refining the photo. Now it's important to color grade the photo in the software like Lightroom. You can see the before and after here. Making the contrast a bit lower is always a good option so the overall brightness is closer together so you don't have too dark shadows and overexposed highlights. And then we come to step 3, creating the textures. Delete the background with a photo editing software like Photoshop or online, but I would not recommend to do it online because the final result is not always that promising. And then it's good to add a margin to the texture so you don't have like black spots anywhere. And then it's also important to generate a normal map, an opacity map and a roughness map. For everyone who is new to this topic, what a normal map does is it fakes the lighting of bumps. So it is oftentimes used to add detail to a low poly mesh instead of a high poly mesh. And how this works is the normal map is separated into three channels. The red channel, the green channel and the blue channel. And the red and green channel are for the shadows on the X and Y axis. And on tangent space normal maps, the blue channel is outwards, so the Z axis. And here's a comparison for you between models that are on a plane and then the normal map and the normal map that is applied on a flat surface. And we're gonna use it to add a little more detail to our leaves. So you can generate the normal map and roughness map online with the normal map generator link will be in the description or you have a program like shader map and you can just input your albedo texture and then export the normal map and roughness map they will be auto generated and for the opacity it's basically just the shape of the leaf made purely white so you can set the contrast to 100 and then make it full brightness and just a black background. What an opacity map does is all the white areas are opaque and all the black areas are translucent. And if you have middle values at the edges of the leaf, it nicely fades out. It's up to you whether you have sharp edges on your opacity map or soft edges, but I will just go with soft edges. Now that the textures are finished, we come to the next step and that is modeling. I'm going to use the free software Blender, link will be in the description. Leave a comment what is your favorite software. Now that we are in Blender, let's delete the default cube and add a plane. In this process, we will not model the shape of the leaf, but we got all the textures, so we just adding a plane. Then we go to shading, new, let's call this leaf one, because I made textures for two leaves, then search for image texture and now select our leaf albedo. Okay, and now I imported all the textures for the first leaf and let's plug the albedo into the base color, then the roughness into the roughness. Opacity comes into the alpha and a very important step with the normal texture is you have to set it to non-color, then add a normal map node in between and then you can plug this into the normal here. Okay, if we switch to shaded view, we can see we are still in EV, so let's switch that to cycles. You can use CPU, but I will switch it to GPU compute because that's just a little bit faster for me. 
I also have a quick tip for you. If you decide to render this in Eevee, you can see the alpha isn't really working and you have a dark background. And if that's the case, just go to the material, scroll down till you see settings and change the blend mode and shadow mode to alpha hashed and then you will have a translucent background. I switched back to cycles because I want to use cycles for this. And now we see there's some heavy shine on the leaf. That's because of the roughness. So we can either change the specular value to a smaller value, but I don't like that. So let's press shift A and add a contrast note in between the brightness contrast. And what I'm going to do is just turn the contrast down a bit. Let's also turn down the brightness. And now you can see the before and then the after. And now let's switch to UV editing. And also you can make this a bit bigger, then switch to rendered view again. And now press seven on the numpad to view this from the top. Press R on the left side and then you can rotate the leaf to your liking. And now I can press Ctrl R and this will place a loop cut through the middle of the leaf. And that is because I can grab those vertices, then press 1, G, and move them up a bit. And also I can press Ctrl R here a few times, like two times, and then grab those outer vertices and set them lower. This looks not very nice right now. You can see those edges. So let's right click and press Shade Smooth. And then for the next step, go to modifiers and add a subdivision surface. And now let's deactivate the ground and you can see this looks like a nice leaf. Okay, and now let's go back to the shader editor, then press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, so you have a copy of that. And now I will just switch out all of those textures for the second leaf textures. I then match the color, saturation and the contrast of both leaves, aligned the second leaf too and then gave it a subdivision surface modifier as well. After that I copied and pasted both leaves around the center until I was satisfied with the result. Make sure to increase your transparent light paths, otherwise you get black artifacts when rendering in Blender. So let's make sure to set the value to a very high number. The next step is to go to this green little icon, then to UV maps and let's add a new map and call this something like new UV. I UV unwrap the model with an island margin of 0.05 so the UVs don't intersect. Now we come to the fifth and final step. Baking. Make sure to plug out the opacity textures before baking the other ones. Because if you do not, you will get this result. And for the opacity, I just plug the maps into the base color and then bake it as a diffuse. I'm finished with the baking. These are all the textures. And now we can go to the UV editing tab. Let's actually go ahead, switch to object mode and delete all those materials. Create a new material and then just call this whatever you like. I will call mine plant. And now we can delete the old UV map. Let's rename the new UV map just to UV map. And you see an edit mode. This is the new UV map. So we can go back to the shading editor, drag in our new maps. And now let's plug those in. The maps are also working without the brightness contrast nodes and that's a good thing too. Let's plug this into the alpha, set the normal to none color and then add a normal map node. Plug this into the normal and yeah, that's it. You got yourself a nice 3D plant. Of course, you can add something like stems or make other plants but I think this is just very easy and you can scatter it on the ground, on the grass or something. And if you want the plant I just made, it will be on my Patreon, link is in the description. And from here you could just use it in Blender 
or what you can do is just go to file export and export it as an fbx or obj for example okay guys that's all i have to say if you liked this tutorial smash the thumbs up button and i'll see you next time bye bye